Yo, what's up guys? We're gonna try this uh, exam type integration question. This is one that is really um, likely to come out in uh, your test. And there's two parts to it. The first one is to prove, prove this. And then we're gonna use that to eventually answer this integration question. Alrighty, so let's just get into it. I'm gonna move this bit further down okay, so we can do it later. And first thing is to prove these two things are equal. Now, there's no real numbers, right? <laughs> there's a, zero, and there's like functions involved. So it looks like we're gonna have to do some substitution, funnily enough, okay? Because inside, we don't really know anything else. Uh, we're just gonna have to change x. I'm gonna say let um, how should we do this? Let u equal to x minus a. Or should I do a minus x? Actually, I think we should do it the other way around. a minus x. If we differentiate this, du on dx, uh, a, remember, is just a constant. It's just a number. Okay, so our pre-numerals here are u and x's. So if I differentiate u in terms of x, a just becomes 0, and we just get negative 1. Which means I can say du equals to negative dx. Okay, so let's treat this like a normal integration question. Okay, let's move this over here. And try to integrate this. Okay, we're going to say... Um, oh, we should also change the limits, right? So as x equals to a and x equals to 0, when x equals to a, u equals to 0 and u equals to a, right? So which means we have 0 on the top and a on the bottom. Um, one other thing is if I switch this around and make x the subject, we should get a minus u. Right, so we want to change everything in terms of u. So since x is a minus u, and dx is actually negative du, this is what we get. Now, the only thing we can really do here is we have a negative sign there, right? Now, when you apply a negative onto an integral, it switches the upper and lower limits, okay? So hopefully you can recognize that later when you were to, uh, when you were to evaluate this integral, it's you sub in the first one and then you subtract and you sub in the next one, right? So we're gonna eventually subtract. So that means if I apply this subtraction now, we're just gonna reverse the limits, okay? So then we can say f a minus u du. Okay, now what we really want to show is we want to show that it's equal to this, which is very similar, except they have it in terms of x's and I have it in terms of u's. Now, hopefully, um, hopefully you remember from the very first time you learn um, calculus and integration, when, when you have like um, integration of x dx, uh, that's the same thing as integrating y uh, and different and integrating in terms of y like you can switch the prenumeral and you'll get the same result just as long as you switch all the other um, Corresponding prenumerals along with it Right, so this is one of those theory um, Type things in integration that will help you in these really really difficult um, Exam type questions so we can say this is just a zero and then you can just switch the x uh, with the u's Okay, so therefore proved. Okay, so let's use this to, let's use this property, okay, to answer the next one. So let's just copy this guy. Okay, so we're going to use this idea. Okay, so hence find 
the integral of this ugly looking trig question. Okay, since it says hence, that means we have to use the previous part. Okay, so let's say um, this is equal to the integral of pi on 2, 0. Sine pi on 2 minus x, sine pi on 2 minus x, plus cos pi on 2 minus x. Okay, so all I did there is I switched the x with a minus x, and a being whatever that limit is at the top. So for us, we have pi on 2. And we're going to switch this x with pi on 2 minus x, pi on 2 minus x, pi on 2 minus x. Okay, now um, sine and cos are what we call complementary functions. And basically the word complementary means 90 degrees. Um, so like this pi on 2. So again, this is another important uh, theory about uh, sine and cos functions. It's sine pi on 2 minus x is the same thing as cos x. This is just a, a, an objective truth. Okay, And it's, it also works the other way as well. So basically, this is also the case. Okay, And so to use this, we can replace the... Um, we can replace everything. So pi on 2, um, the numerator should just become cos x, and the denominator, this is cos x as well, and this one is sin x. Okay, so we now have pretty much the same thing, except the numerator turned into cos, right? And it looks like we can't really get anywhere from here. And so I'm going to do something pretty, pretty sexy. I'm going to do this technique here. I'm going to plus sine x and subtract sine x. Okay, so why would I do that? Well, first of all, sine x minus sine x is zero, so I didn't really change the question. But what we can do with this is we can split it up and say pi on 2 cos x plus sine x on cos x plus sine x, and you can split up this integral. which is great because this guy is just one. Right, so this is just pi on two, one minus sine x, cos x plus sine x and dx. And then you can say, okay, well, wait a minute. This one, integrating this is actually the question. It's actually just the question, right? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to just rewrite what we have going on. So the question was this. Right, so this is the question. The right-hand side, I'm going to split up and say this equals to the integration of just 1 and the integration of the second guy. On the denominator, just to make it look nice, I'm just going to swap the cos and sine, sine plus cos. Okay? And of course here is just the same thing. Okay, now I'm going to need some new space. I'm going to make this uh, where are we scrolling direction vertical. Okay, so I'm going to, again, just copy this over. Because we're right at the doorstep, but I just need to show this a bit clean, um, nice and cleanly. Can you notice that, that this and this, they're the same thing, right? So I'm going to move one of them to the left-hand side. Okay, so since this one has negative, let's add it to the other side, which means we should have two lots of...
we just have two lots of them, right? And on this side, we just have pi on 2 and 1 dx. Okay, now this is just, wait, let's actually evaluate this right-hand side. We've been carrying, we've been delaying this for a while. If you integrate 1, you get x. Which means if you sub it in, we have pi on 2 minus 0. Right? So I'm just going to write minus 0. And over here, I'm, my hands are getting a bit tired, so I'm just going to copy this around. <laughs> okay, and the last thing is we can just divide both sides by 2. So that means... equals to just pi on 4. And that is the answer. So just to recap, this was a very nice question. Again, it's a really um, common exam question that they can chuck in. But there was two parts to it, right? There was this prove this identity um, thing first. We had to prove these guys. And we used that um, to answer this question. And we really didn't even do much integrating at all. Right, it was just really algebra moving things around, and we identified that there was, oh, these guys are the same, and so we just gathered it, and that happened to be the question that they were asking for. Okay, so if that, hopefully that made sense. Um, if you have any problems with it, just leave a comment, and we can sort it out. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.